working. Oh, great. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Michael, and I'm working in a company called Hibernating Rhinos. Uh, a bit strange name. Um, no, it's turning the pages automatically, see? We are dealing with databases. We are specializing in databases, and we produce profilers and NoSQL database, um, RavenDB code. And I'm working on a core, core dev team of RavenDB, so I am going to talk about now uh, about Raft consensus protocol. This is something that we use uh, in RavenDB, and this is something that can be beneficial not only in database space, but in many kinds of scenarios. So, but before we talk about Raft itself, let's see what the heck is consensus. So distributed systems, distributed, the part is very simple. It's simply a group of computers that work together and just does things as a, as a group communicates with itself. So what is a consensus? Well, in a basic scenario, usually you have client server. You tell the server, I want to write eight on the server, right? And the server writes and gets a response, request response. Now, what happens if you have a group of computers and you want to propagate to write eight onto all of them? So you do the same, you write a eight to one of them. Now the question is, what happens next? How do those computers communicate and distribute or write eight to all of them? This is called, uh, when you are dealing with algorithms, this is called a distributed consensus. When computers reach a consensus. Very simple. So let's see a small example before before we actually dive into what the heck is Raft. Think of, consider very simple scenario. We have three different uh, banks with three different bank accounts. And uh, we want to perform simple operation on a cluster of those machines, uh, transfer money between accounts. So we want to transfer from A to B, from C to A, certain sorts of money. So Maybe we can do it sequentially. So we subtract from A, we add to B, then we subtract from C, add to A, then again, subtract and add. Now that's nice, but what happens in real life? Sometimes, for example, we need to do those operations not in the order. So for example, if we do the first and the third before the second, we might get into overdraft in account A. So maybe it's not good. And if we're dealing with distributed systems, many things can go wrong. So anyone wants to tell me what can go wrong in a distributed system? Uh, nobody? Okay, so uh, let's take a look at a what comprises a distributed system. So wh what kind of trades do we want of a proper distributed system that actually would work in a real life scenario? First of all, we need to take into account that any distributed system can fail at any, any of its parts because it has lots of moving parts. It's, as we remember, it's a computer, uh, many computers that work together, so uh, it can fail at any time, any part of the system, and we need to take into account and somehow deal with that. Now, uh, when we are dealing with distributed system, remember many computers, so we can potentially allow, or usually we want to allow uh, input on multiple machines uh, from separate clients, load balancing, one of the reasons. But what happens if you have uh, conflicting changes or conflicting input from users? Think about it like this. If you have two database cluster, cluster with two database nodes, two different machines, and you have client, two, two separate clients change in the same time, the same record with conflicting changes. Now, 
we need to f we need to have a way to decide which one of them is right, which one of them actually source of truth. Let's call it like that. Now, many times, as we have seen in previous example, uh, there is a notion of uh, event ordering. We have a cluster-wide events that happen. Uh, for example, we want to add some machine to a cluster, right? Then we need to notify all nodes of the cluster that some machine was added or removed from a cluster. Just to give you a small example, that we need to, uh, many times we need to agree on some sort of event order, maybe it's a chronological order or some other type of order, doesn't really matter. So we need to have a way to do it. And finally, because it's inherently faulty, we need to have a way uh, to recover from the errors uh, to, ha to, to be able to continue working because that's reason of existence of distributed system to, have, uh, sur to, to make system survivable. So that's where distributed consensus algorithms come this way. And actually this is a lie, it's not really easy, nothing in distributed systems is, is easy. Uh, but uh, distributed consensus algorithms provide you the framework like Ted Neward said, they allow you to fold in the pit of success. <laughs> Uh, they provide you a kind of framework and guidance how to make uh, distributed systems more reliable, more, more survivable, to, to be able to survive better the real world. So, after all this lengthy introduction and a bit of a clickbait in the title, what the hell is Raft? Well, that's simply it. It's not, not really difficult. It's a persistent event log. The, 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 rest of the, the rest of its trades is a bonus. But what is a persistent event log? Also, it's simple. It's a sequence of events that happen one if uh, after each other. And the idea behind uh, con uh, distributed consensus is how do you know which event happened before which? Usually, it's chronological order. It doesn't have to be, but usually, it's chronological order. So how do you achieve this kind of uh, persistence of events? So let's see another small example. Let's call a leader, the, the circle with L. Uh, it will be our so source of truth, and all user input will pass through it. So let's assume we are, we are implementing the same example that I so, uh, show be, sh have shown before with uh, three bank accounts. So a client wants to uh, add some money into account A. Leader says, okay, we do something we call append. It's kind of tentatively right that we, okay, we have an, this kind of operation. Now the leader says oh, to, to, other, to other cluster nodes, do this also, append it. They say, okay, I've done it. Leader says, okay, most of you agree that it is there, then I can commit it, write it in, per, in a persistent way. This is called a quorum. I will return to this uh, notion a couple of times, but uh, agreement of majority of nodes that something has happened or acknowledgement of something that has happened, it's called a uh, quorum. That the There is a quorum for a decision or for ev an event. So when a quorum has reached, a leader can commit and uh, return the, to the client that, okay, I have written the operation, the, the operation has completed. And then tell the other nodes, okay, the quorum was reached, committed now. It sounds simple, right? Well, the, the commits are, uh, the, the, the acknowledgement for commits can come later, so the, as long as the leader sees an agreement of all nodes, it can return the operation because uh, the, the, the return positive response because the, it knows that the, the, the cluster has written those, uh, th those entries, or this entry. Now, there is another thing that comes here, uh, which essentially the reason for the title democracy, how do you choose leader because choosing the leader, choosing the source of truth can be pretty important. So we have an election. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> democracy. 
So the leader election is uh, also a pretty interesting part of this uh, algorithm. So we have uh, three, three different states that a node in a raft cluster uh, can have follower, candidate, and the leader. So oh, it's usual and makes sense that all nodes are followers at the beginning, right? Then what happens? There is some time and then a, a follower can declare elections and it becomes a candidate. Okay, so I will denote the candidates with C and followers with F, and leaders with L, makes sense. Now, the candidate says to all, to all of them, please vote for me. And the candidates and the followers vote for the first one uh, that asks them to vote, and the leader votes for, 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 for himself. Why not? Uh, the candidate votes, uh, votes for itself. And then, after it reaches a quorum of votes, this means half plus one of nodes return, yeah, I will wo vote for you, half plus one, the candidate wins an election and becomes a leader. Democracy. Now, this, uh, now a after an election, leader sends heartbeats as I am still in power, follow me, obey me. So he says, I'm alive, and no say, okay, I will obey you, and accept input from you. Now, uh, let's, w what happens here? There is no quorum, so what, what will happen here? There is no quorum possible for elections, so uh, the follower will, will uh, in a loop, declare in such situation elections and it, the, there will be no quorum, so no leader. So in such situation, um, there, is, there, there, is, there, there will be no possible input from, for, from users in, in, in this state. So uh, this is one of the things I want to stress. This is not, Raft is not a magic pill. It's not, it's not a, a magic powder that you just add water, poof, you have a distributed system that is survivable. It's just a architectural solution which has some gotchas that we need to need to be taken into account. And um, essentially, uh, raft cluster uh, is survivable as long as uh, more than half of its nodes are alive, basically. So there is another interesting thing uh, about leader election. Uh, b what happens when there are problems? Okay. So in the usual situation, we have a leader. Note the term one, I will get to it in a minute. He says, okay, I'm alive, okay. And then network partition happens. What is a network partition or a split brain? Sometimes it's called. Uh, it means that nodes cannot communicate over this boundary for some reason, network reason, operating system reason, doesn't really matter. So essentially, when leader tries to do a heartbeat in a network partition scenario, he re results in timeouts, basically. So what happens on the other side of the network partition? Leader remains a leader. He does not, have, uh, d d does not receive acts from followers, but the other side declares an election because they, they time out with the heartbeats. And there are two leaders now, but the second leader has term two. So why this number of terms uh, the, or numbering of leader is needed to resolve the problem or, or to recover from uh, network partitioning. So in this case, what happens? The leader, the new leader sends to an old leader, I'm alive because from its perspective, this, the old leader is a follower. That, that's leaders. <laughs> when they take into power, the rest are followers. So. In this case, Raft protocol states that uh, old leader, which is not old, no longer relevant, will step down uh, as, as uh, when it receives heartbeat or any kind of message with higher, higher terms. This assures us that uh, within certain amount of time, which is time between heartbeats, uh, you can be sure that there will be only one so single source of truth, only one leader. Now, what happens after leader steps down? This is also a very, very important thing. 
let's say we have a cluster, one of them goes offline, the, the, the next one wins election, and sends append entries. Usually append entries, uh, it's, uh, it's, again, raft is something that is asynchronous, so uh, it, when you have lots of input from user, it can uh, grow, it, have, it will have queue of uh, entries that will need to be appended, so usually are, they are grouped by such messages. So leader uh, sends append entries, and when it's empty, you can consider it a heartbeat, for example. Usually that's done like this. So what happens is all nodes have this kind of queue. So the blue one is a com already committed entries, these or events, uh, which are essentially immutable before because we want to know the, the order of, of events. And then we have appended entries, which are, as we remember, tentative entries, right? So the nodes that receive uh, append entries from the new leader will have this. Leader in a raft uh, protocol dictates the order of events that happen. This means that um, this means that uh, the, the appended entries which are not committed yet may, may get replaced and uh, just disappear not disappear, but may, may get discarded because uh, there, there is no cluster consensus on those yet, and this means that the new leader needs to, we want to have single source of truth, right? The new leader needs to maintain its kind of truth, basically. Now, all, all, the, all this is nice, and that's roughly how the Raft protocol works. It's not really a complicated idea. That's why uh, if you take a look at its uh, thesis, it's actually a PhD thesis from, uh, I think, the middle 2000s. I don't remember the exact date. Um, and uh, if you take a look at the title of the PhD thesis, you will see that uh, it is an understandable consensus algorithm because if you try to look at its alternatives like Paxos, uh, even the people who implemented successfully Paxos do not understand how it works <laughs> because it's so complicated, uh, really convoluted. Uh, and draft is pretty easy to understand. It has its own gotchas, we will, which we'll get to, but the, the, the general idea is what, uh, what I've told you now. now uh, there are several invariants that needs to be uh, uh, that needs to be upholded when you have a raft or if you implement a raft protocol. First of all, we are dealing with communication between uh, computers over a network, right? And a network can duplicate packages, can drop packages, can reorder packages. So uh, each message needs to have uh, its response request m must m match one response only, and uh, th there is a need to not, not to process messages twice because it can happen, and as you can imagine, because as you can imagine, it can wreak havoc on your Raft uh, implementation uh, since its state may depend, no, it depends on, on some of the messages it, it produces. So if you, for example, have a double declare vote message, so it, it, it can lead at best in performance, uh, in bad performance, and at worst, it can lead to in, in incorrect and invalid state. Now, there is another thing. Uh, each event has, uh, in, in, has an index and a term, so uh, there is not, n no such thing as double and duplicate events. This is a precaution against uh, also message duplication. And it, it is a way to uh, compare messages, uh, compare message, compare events when you are dealing with comparing, uh, comparing event logs and truncating the appended events. So this, uh, th this is important uh, for the uh, f for the algorithm to be correct, uh, as uh, if if you take a look at the PhD thesis, it, it, the the the, the uh, formal proof that it is w the the algorithm is working and it's correct depends on its invari invariance and that's one of them. Now, <laughs> that's a funny, a bit funny uh, invariant, 
what w in in this case, two candidates can theoretically declare uh, elections, right? So, who do you think? Which candidate will do you think will win the elections? It's very very logical, it common sense really. What do you think? Are you sure? Second. Yes, exactly. Uh, that's that's actually an invariant uh, of of the raft protocol uh, because we want to discard and we want to have as as full picture as possible. So uh, I was a bit simplifying things uh, when I was telling about the elections before. That's w another thing that uh, the, the the followers or can other candidates that, that are being asked for votes uh, consider is the length of uh, event essentially uh, in the request for vote you send its last index and last term basically of its event log and that's another reason why the second invariant is important because this way you can compare between the lengths of uh, event logs between different uh, cluster nodes basically so to sum it up, uh, the votes with a smaller log will be rejected, basically. So the follower will vote for candidate two. The candidate one will, will vote for itself. Candidate two will say, I'm candidate, I'm not voting. And the follower will, will vote for candidate two. This means the candidate two will become a leader in this case. Now, uh, there are a couple of uh, implementation gotchas that uh, in case you decide to implement this raft protocol that I want to talk about because uh, m most of the implementations that I've seen are custom tailored to specific project or specific use and are not really generic and the generic ones are not battle proven or battle tested and as you can understand and you can imagine such protocol can and will contain many bugs until it's battle proven and all the bugs were fixed. And uh, our current version of our database contains second implementation we brought from scratch because the previous implementation had many bugs. So uh, those gotchas are essentially, th th there are war stories behind them. Uh, so first of all, it's very important, race conditions. Uh, if you implement Raft, uh, that's what you need to beware, especially from state changes and uh, several messages arriving at once, especially from state changes, because uh, there is a single instance of Raft engine or whatever you call it can change its behaviors completely. And the major, major um, gotcha is race condition when the, 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 the state is changes what happens when message arrives and uh, during the change and stuff like that. Uh, obviously, this kind of uh, algorithm is very vulnerable for race conditions. Now, there are edge cases. What happens when you have uh, 20 nodes and you have six candidates and th they start uh, evaluating and they time some, some st stuff time out, stuff like that. Edge cases are uh, a thing to be wary about because uh, such algorithm has lots of moving parts and lots of small things to consider. And since we are dealing with inherently faulty systems which have network, which have operating systems, all sorts of queues, uh, network protocols, depends on how you implement the communication, if it's TCP, if it's HTTP, REST, for example. All, all, all of those has, has their own gotchas, has their own uh, things to consider with performance and stuff like that. So, uh, for example, if you have a system with unstable network that sometimes has higher latencies, uh, this can mean, for example, can can mean, for example, uh, very frequent elections. So that's, by the way, one of the things we occurred in one of the uh, at one of our clients. So. Uh, frequent elections means no performance or really bad performance. So there are things that needs to be thought about. And uh, things br breaking in variance uh, and performance issues are really can, can green the project to a halt, especially if you 
write something that depends on Raft, and you usually want to write something that depends on Raft because you want fault tolerance. Uh, so things are few, even simple things like network saturation, in my experience, are not getting tested enough. Uh, in any distributed system, Raft is no exception for that. Now, another small, small thing I want to talk about uh, is when not to use Raft. Well, that's pretty simple. First of all, when you don't care about uh, the cluster-wide events or order of events in general, there is no need uh, for, for the Raft to be used because implementation of Raft uh, involves, uh, potentially can involve uh, lots of man hours, lots of debugging sessions and stuff like that, and writing distributed systems is never easy. Uh, again, a, a, an evaluation of a return of investment needs to be done very carefully in this case because uh, Raft can offer really great fault tolerance and great uh, features that can impress stakeholders and users, but uh, sometimes it just it will take too much time and effort to implement. So this is a word of caution. I'm not telling you not to use Raft, but use it sparingly and use where it's really needed and where its performance, not performance, but where its benefits will uh, improve whatever uh, the things you need to do. And another thing where you don't need load balancing or fault tolerance, so no, no need to bother with draft, it's not a magic pill, it's not a silver bullet. So uh, you, you use it with caution, but wh where, I where you do need load balancing or fault tolerance, Raft can provide with amazing, amazing features. I'm talking from experience. Uh, just to give you an example, what kind of thing we're using it for. And, uh, we have a, I'm, I'm working on a NoSQL database. So we're not using it for data, but for things that modify the cluster, add node to a cluster, remove node, add index to one node, and have it spread to all the, all the nodes. Uh, do a distributed compare exchange, basically, if you are familiar with this, uh, uh, to do a distributed compare exchange to have uh, very performant uh, optimistic concurrency on, on your uh, changes, mutations to data, stuff like that. So essentially, a Raft provides a very efficient and very fault tolerant clustering for for a distributed system, in our case, is a database. But on the other hand, mm, it took an effort of about five people for about, it, in our case, for about six months to implement it properly. Over time, I mean, not 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 consequently, but over time. So it, it's it's a very good idea, but use it with caution. And to wrap it up, we, as, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, Raft, provides, uh, Raft provides more or less the necessary traits for a proper distributed system. It allows uh, the cluster to agree on, on events, on an order of events. Uh, it allows uh, to f f f to com for the system to continue if you have less than half nodes falling down or stopping working for any reason. It allows the system to continue for input and queries to continue on the system. Uh, it allows to recover from errors because there's things like network partition, nodes going down and then going up. The leader will just queue uh, its changes in its event log and will send the, the needed events to a node that comes back online. So essentially, it's an error recovery due to, uh, due to inherent features of Raft. And finally, it's, by the way, it's very important conflict resolution if you allowed for load balancing, allow for master-master or active-active load balancing. Conflict resolution, when the, 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 this means that when, when you have a single leader that, that gets chosen not by configuration or sysadmins, but by automatically by a, a protocol or an algorithm, it's, it's a big deal in my opinion. So 
there is that uh, and I am a bit a bit early finish a bit early so questions thank you thank you very much for such great introduction into raft uh, I have a question about uh, what are practical differences between Paxos and Raft? Like, uh, if Paxos is so complicated, why it still exists? I mean, uh, Raft eventually is simplified version. Uh, can you talk about features, uh, about um, differences between these two? The, 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 at the end of the day, the, fi the features that come out of the, you know, out of the black box that is co distributed consensus protocol, no, no differences that I can think of. Uh, the difference is, for example, in Paxos, you have uh, five states of, of each node that they can get very complicated transitioning from one to another with several uh, pingbacks back and forth f between the leader and nodes and stuff like that. So at the end, at the end of the day, there is no discernible difference because uh, distributed consensus protocol, any distributed consensus protocol provides two things. Ordering of events, of cluster-wide events, and a leader election, basically. So, single source of truth, that's about it. Okay, but uh, can you uh, explain, maybe maybe you've met this before, uh, where Poxos is uh, in use, uh, comparing to Raft? I I can't think about example where Paxos is still in use. I think some Microsoft systems may have it in use because the last time I, I heard about successful implementation, it was A, my boss, and B, and B some uh, people at Microsoft that implemented Paxos. Uh, so I've read, I've tried to read a couple of times uh, Paxos paper and frankly, I didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> too much because it I needed to draw all sorts of charts and stuff and still okay thank you any other questions just a sec I have a question what happens uh, with those discarded tra transactions uh, are they forgotten are there uh, replicated uh, after some time on. Uh, okay, you're talking about appended uh, appending entries. Yes, when appended. the leader changes, there are some kind of transactions which are not replicated to other servers. Okay, so uh, essentially, what happens is that that committed entries. The the idea the, the behind all of this that committed entries. Uh, have agreement of most of majority of the cluster that they are there okay so those cannot be touched appended entries which are still appended this means those entries have not yet have not yet reached a quorum this means they just get discarded this is something that when you use raft you need to take this into account that uh, your event log may get uh, may go back some 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 length because some of the uh, user rights were not yet uh, have not yet received enough acknowledgements from the from the cluster. Usually, when you have leader change, it also involves uh, some sort of uh, failure, be it node going down or some split brain or something or some uh, spike in latency or something that causes the, the timeout, uh, the election timeout. And this means that uh, you have a problem and probably uh, this thing is the least of your worries, but to answer your question, they just get discarded if they are appended. And okay, it's not exactly true because a uh, leader uh, discards those entries that are not that are, do not match its own appended uh, entries. So if, if you have, let's say, five appended entries, a leader and a node has three in them in common, the, this means those three remain. But the other two, which are different between leader and a uh, and a follower, will get discarded. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? So you mentioned that uh, 
uh, raft shouldn't be used if you don't uh, want to preserve uh, ordering of events. Uh, which it is not a good uh, use case to use raft. And what would be the uh, use case in which you don't need uh, uh, to preserve ordering of events? Like uh, you will probably need to elect a leader, but don't care about the events. Uh, what uh, kind of? It, it, it's it's also a good case. I I said that. Um, it's not do not need. I said there is less need because uh, uh, Raft exists for two things: for election, dynamic election of a leader, and for uh, for event ordering. If you don't care of one of them, this means you have less reasons to use it. But if you, for example, want a feature of dynamic leader election, then why not? It will just mean less work for Raft, less network saturation for Raft pin back between the leader and its followers. Stuff like that. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, so, what happens when the elections are not successful? When the votes are split between multiple candidates with the same event chain length? Um, the the event the the candidates. Uh, okay. Election timeout uh, and each follower is randomized slightly s to, to, to lessen the chance that there will be uh, at the same time two candidates declaring a, an election, basically. And uh, what will happen is the election will be held another time. An another time. Usually one of the optimizations that are done in this case and what we have done, for example, by the way, uh, this GitHub is our uh, source code of our database. You can take a look at it. It has a uh, pretty good and, and uh, for version 4.0, it has pretty good and battle proven raft implementation. You can take a look at it afterwards. What we do, for example, to uh, lessen this case, we do a trial, uh, trial election to see if there is a split that is more optimized and, and less involved and only if the trial election is not split we are doing the real election but essentially raft paper the, the states that you need to have a timeout uh, to randomize the, the election timeouts again and hold another election thank you All right any other questions on your side i suppose no okay then yeah is there is a way to uh, affect decision of election by taking into account network latency? For example, if some nodes has network issues, don't let them be elected. Yeah, uh, it's it depends on uh, as you as you may may remember, I said that uh, many raft implementation depend on a project and its needs. So, for example, one of the things we allow in our project, we have a bit more states. We have uh, non-voting members. So we just declare some nodes that are followers and non-voting members, and you can declare that, and uh, that, that's how we handle this kind of use case. But again, it depends on your needs. Essentially, uh, uh, this kind of algorithms have, uh, they, they, they need to have uh, the, the timeouts, the election timeout needs to be much higher. We usually set it twice, test the late average latency and set election timeout twice the latency of uh, communication between the nodes. This way we can be pretty sure that uh, election don't happen too frequently. Thank you. Okay, one more question I can see. Yeah, we have time. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have a question about um, when we have a split, network split, mm -hmm. and we have uh, two leaders. Okay. And um, this split is um, keeps for a long time, and uh, we still need to process in the transaction or uh, do some uh, well, bring some value to the customers. Uh, what happens when uh, we restore this uh, network consistency and uh, what we got? Uh, because uh, in some cases we uh, have a cons consens consensus on each uh, part of this um, network split, but uh, and maybe we can finish some transactions. But can we uh, um, not manage, but um, 
uh, don't skip the transactions for the first cluster and uh, that uh, have no conflicts between the second cluster. So it's not a fact. Uh, unfortunately, that's one of the drawbacks that I said that uh, it does not uh, uh, fit any use case. Uh, if you have, for example, five and three nodes in two net and two parts of a split brain, this means that uh, uh, when the, the, the leader with larger uh, with larger event log will win, basically. Mm -hmm. But if uh, I but if the, the the but no. It won't happen. It won't happen. I'll tell you why, because uh, one of the one one of those w one of the parts of a split brain won't uh, win an election because the old leader has more nodes on its topology list, so it won't reach a quorum. For example, you have four and five uh, nodes on two parts of a split brain, but the old leader will have nine nodes, and we it will receive ax from only three f four. Um, for a pending of entries, it will receive acts only from three followers, not from five or mm -hmm. seven or whatever. This means that one of the uh, parts of a split brain will ref uh, just reject uh, rights, basically. Mm -hmm. So in this case, uh, if we um, uh, like have split uh, to so the half of the network, part part of the system will reject will be read only, basically. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are there any other, other questions? Okay. What's, uh, what is required if you want to add some more nodes? So now this leader knows its topology. He knows how many votes he needs for quorum. Let's say we add uh, another 10 or 20 uh, nodes. And uh, what, what happens next? Um, what happens next? Usually, uh, usually it depends on an implementation of Raft. What we do in our implementation, we uh, adding to a, a cluster is uh, also a Raft uh, event, basically. So change topology event is essentially a Raft event. So uh, as long as a cluster agrees and gets a quorum on a changed topology, this means that the leader will commit the, the changed uh, number of nodes, and then it will have its topology updated and will start communicating with other nodes. Now, uh, in order to uh, bring those new nodes up to date, we implemented a new command uh, we called snapshots. So we just pack up uh, all the, if, if we have too much, uh, different between even log lengths. Uh, so the leader will uh, pack up uh, its update into one snapshot and will transmit it to uh, those nodes. And only then they will become voting members after they have catched up to, caught up to date uh, to those events. Uh, that's how we do it at least. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, I can see. Uh, what are your next steps in case the nodes don't get added to the topology? To try to to test why, because if they are not, do not get added, this means that there is no quorum. This means that something is wrong with with the nodes, uh, be it network issues or nodes offline. This is mo this is a monitoring DevOps monitoring thing basically um, that DevOps and monitoring needs to monitor the nodes and see what's going on. Again, it depends on logging, it depends on stuff like that. Uh, usually we also like to add uh, uh, debug endpoints to have a easy way with a browser and HTTP request to see the topology state, for example, stuff like that. So uh, there, are, there are multiple ways to go about it, but, ba but at f first of it, it's a DevOps question. H how do DevOps know when something is go goes wrong? Okay, thank you.